Welcome to Wide Angle Conversations, an initiative of Life by Design with Taruna Agarwal. This is season three of meaningful discussions with women who have carved out success for themselves. The year 2020 started as any other year, but very soon the world was thrown into an unprecedented situation, the COVID-19 pandemic, which disrupted the rhythm of life as we knew it. Human experience around resilience, compassion, adaptability, inclusion and equality all became center stage. Individual and collective recalibration is going on and we believe that meaningful conversations are an important step in the direction towards creating a more hopeful future for all. This season we have invited women whose work will reflect their passion to create a more inclusive and equal world. My guest today is an inspiring leader from the growing community of women in technology, Mary Helen Mansad. She is the Regional Business Development Director for Access Communication, South Asia Pacific. Hi, Mary. Welcome to Wide Angle Conversation, Season 3. Hi, Taruna. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very happy to be there. I'm honored to have you here, Mary. Uh, Mary, tell us a little bit about your journey so far. Well, I came from a military family mm -hmm. uh, in France. And I think I have been developing this sense of uh, protecting people, protecting citizens. And I have been uh, working in several companies in the, in the defense, in the security industry, in the aerospace industry. So I think for, for me, these are very strong values that have uh, built the person that I am today. Right. And I know you have led a lot of uh, global teams, you've held a lot of global positions in IT and security, and you've been leading diverse teams across the world. So tell us, what is the importance of diversity and inclusion uh, in the workplace? Well, what I can see today is that uh, women are bringing something a bit different at the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, if you take the example of how this uh, COVID-19 crisis is managed in Germany, mm -hmm. in New Zealand, or in Taiwan, those countries managed by women. It seems to me that they're the way to approach the crisis mm -hmm. that is a bit different. So I think the, the women, they, from their experience at home, they bring uh, a lot of things. I mean, when you are a woman and when you have children or age parent, mm -hmm. you are a supply chain manager, you are a psychologist, you are a cook, so you, you, you have a visibility of everything. Women are, are bringing this kind of holistic views mm -hmm. on things with mm -hmm. both a mix of planification capabilities, right. but also very pragmatic things. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, that's really uh, important. Yeah, so women are bringing their whole self into the organization and they are bringing a lot of their strengths in, in, in there. Yeah. Right. But, and so if uh, there is a diverse team and there's a team of just one kind, one, uh, you know, one type of people, what's the difference that you see in the decision making and, and, and the performance and its impact on that? Yeah, this is a very uh, interesting question and I developed some interest about that, about when within a team, mm -hmm. a, a small group, a minority, uh, become comfortable enough to mm -hmm. share and contribute. So research shows that it's 30%. So if there are more than 30% of people that are different mm -hmm. okay. in a team, then they, they dare to voice <laughs> their opinion and to right. share what they want. So it seems to me that diversity, it's not only gender diversity, it's right. also a nationality, age, uh, being a vegetarian or non-vegetarian, <laughs> all these kind of things. <laughs> right. um, people are bringing different things. And of course, when you have different backgrounds, different ways to consider things, right. 
uh, it's not that easy to communicate at the first mm -hmm. at first because you are not exactly speaking the same language right so there is a little bit of a challenge in the communication you need really to go a little bit deeper in your conversation with the people mm -hmm. to really understand what they mean and at the end i think the benefit is that the solutions that you 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 are reaching mm -hmm. are richer uh, because of all these inputs from diverse people, so okay. that's my view. So maybe in leading all these teams, you know, the diverse teams, now you have kind of embodied that inclusive leadership in your style, right? But tell us about the time when actually you were, you know, the, the concept of DNI was introduced. Was there any such thing or was it just the way you, you were working that you picked it up in that? Today it is your leadership style. Uh, yeah, it started for me uh, when I was working for, for an American company mm -hmm. and uh, I, I, get, uh, I get promoted okay. and at that time in American companies they were a bit of uh, pioneers in mm. this kind of uh, uh, women in technology uh, programs. Right. So I started with, with this and I get the opportunity to, to, to have a coach mm -hmm. uh, as part of this program. Uh, to help me with this new new role that I had. So it, it was the first time that I was in contact at the workplace with this kind of uh, uh, diversity and inclusion initiative. Mm -hmm. And now here in, uh, in my company, in uh, Axis Communication in the uh, APAC region, yeah. um, I'm responsible, it's not my role, it's a kind of mission, <laughs> but I'm also responsible to um, put in place some of those initiatives for the company. Okay. Uh, the company is uh, from Sweden and um, I, I would say the Nordic countries in mm -hmm. Europe, they have this uh, culture of uh, uh, equality and diversity right. at the workplace and it seems it's more natural, mm -hmm. even in tech company like our company, to see uh, more mm -hmm. and more women uh, in in those kind of companies. Right. Yeah, that is true. There has been a shift. People are moving more towards that. But still, we do see, even today, we see a lot of women giving up on their career, a lot of them not reaching, reaching the top positions. And uh, we would like to see more women in the boards, but that's still a way to go. So why do you think that is happening? As just a while ago, you said that we have a lot of strengths and we bring that, the whole thing to, to our workplace. Then why is it that many of the women drop out? as we are seeing across the world? I think uh, some of the women, they, they are still in this mindset, like it was in the university, mm. if I'm working, if I'm doing a good job, mm -hmm. I will get a good mark. And at the workplace, it's different. If you are doing a, a good job mm. and nobody knows, yeah. <laughs> you will not be promoted Absolutely. because nobody knows that you are doing a good job. So my advice to, to the women at the workplace is, is really to be visible, mm. to take the stage. And if it's possible vis-a-vis -vis the company culture, talk to your boss, talk to the boss of your boss. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> make visible your contribution to the company. Mm. And uh, it's also about network because um, I think men are very good in networking and just going for a drink <laughs> with someone with no reason. <laughs> Sometimes women, they need a reason. Yeah. I mean, there is no reason. Just yeah. talk to someone. Well, what about having a drink together or take a coffee or lunch together? Yeah. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's uh, okay. So I think this visibility and networking thing is, uh, is, uh, is quite important. Another thing that I uh, would like to mention, which is really key for, for women, is to get the um, appropriate support from their uh, partner in life. Right. Uh -huh. uh, because if your ambition is to be at the board level, as you were just saying, mm. or to, to have a director role, um, if your partner in life disagree or don't want to take yeah. a fair share of domestic work and help with the aged parents mm. or with the children, this will be a problem. And I would say the, the third thing is mm. about the company culture. Yeah. Uh, you need, when, when, you, when you apply for a job, you need to be sure that you are in a woman-friendly, 
mm. uh, type of culture. You can go on the website and see how many divisions or business lines are managed by women. You can have a look at the board of directors mm, yeah. and see if there are some women there. And uh, you can try to reach out so mm. with a few women within the company already just to get their impression about how is it to be a, an employee in this company. Okay. So be sure you are joining a, a women-friendly uh, company. I think that's, right. that's another advice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so for yourself, Mary, you've, uh, you know, you mm. never thought of, you've been there, you, so you're a director today at the director level and uh, you've been working throughout. What enabled your success? Well, uh, I, I think there are uh, personal things. Mm. I, I mean, uh, I think I'm a kind of uh, uh, strategist. Mm -hmm. I am able to process a lot of inputs and to be able to see uh, some pattern or things for the long term okay. and build for that. And uh, I am also very um, uh, interested in experimentation. I mean, okay. it's good to have idea and concepts, but I I'd like to try something. Okay. So uh, uh, that's my way of, of doing, doing things and mm -hmm. usually this is uh, quite successful in, in, in companies, okay. at least companies who like people who are able to think a little bit out <laughs> of the box. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. And also what has been help, helpful to me is to have some uh, mentors mm -hmm. in the organization or uh, managers that have been um, helping me, pushing me, I've been able to identify me. Okay. To, 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 to grow as a professional. So for me, that was important. And another thing for me was also the uh, importance of role models. Mm. Um, right. I started my career, I, I, I remember a woman that was very talented. She was managing a very big project. Mm -hmm. It was in the aerospace industry. More than 200 people, I remember she had the, uh, this uh, Aston Martin car that was the oh, James okay. Bond <laughs> <laughs> car. So I was very, uh, really <laughs> a lot of admiration for her, for her car. And she was also a painter. Mm -hmm. So she was able also to, to do some very uh, good art. So I was uh, very impressed by her and I wanted to be uh, like yeah. her. So to have you and, and people like you as role models is one of the ideas of this conversation. Yeah. Um, so in your entire journey, there must have been some times that were, you know, very challenging. Yeah, uh, yeah. Four year, four years ago, I uh, experienced a, a health, very big health problem. Okay. And uh, it was um, a bit difficult to to manage uh, mm. because first, when something like this happened to you, you 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 are in a kind of uh, not accepting, yeah. blaming other, you are on a shock, you are, why me, why this is happening to me? Right. And, right. and then you, you try to understand that what happens to you is because of you. Mm -hmm. and, and I think becoming aware of yourself, yeah. uh, about who you are, about the resources that you can find in your own self, mm -hmm. uh, this is extremely important and this is helping you to build your own uh, resilience. Right. So I think this together with some um, um, meditation and yoga that I started at that time, mm. uh, this has been really uh, helpful to me. I think what you highlighted right now, to be aware of what's going on within you, and if you can do that on your own, or you have mentors and coaches to help you through with that, um, I think that that is, that is essential. For yeah, us. it's really important because sometimes uh, women, they think that they should use the, the masculine codes mm. at work. But right. Nobody is asking you to, to, be a, to be a man if you're a woman. I mean, just right. be yourself mm. and, and build your own way to, 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 to be at work and mm. to contribute at work. Right. So bring your authentic self. Be yourself yeah. Yeah. at the workplace. What is the, you know, one or few things that you would want to say to the women out there, our viewers who are listening in? Um, I would like to, to say to them, be uh, self-aware of who you are, right. uh, leverage on your strengths, uh, 
Mm. Don't try to be someone else. I mean, you have everything in you mm. to connect with people, to network, to grow as a professional. Right. So be really uh, more self-confident, mm. self-confident, more self-aware. And uh, I mean, count your blessing. In this world where you count the money, you count <laughs> the, your weight, you count your age, count your blessing and then you will be a bit different. <laughs> right, that is wonderful. That was uh, really, thank you. Thank you so much for this uh, insightful conversation. And uh, you will, you're indeed an inspiration to and a role model for the world. Thank you, Tarona. Very thank happy you. to be there. <laughs> thank you so much, Mary. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. We'd like to hear from you, so do leave your thoughts and comments, and we'll see you next week. Until then, stay safe and follow all the safety measures. Don't forget to take your mask when you leave home. I have mine here. It is the Joe Kilda 100% raw silk mask with an Italian satin silk lining. It is natural, and so it's non-abrasive and gentle on the skin. It comes with its own Joe Kilda fabric pouch, so you can keep it safely. You can buy yours at joekilda.com, so hurry on. 10% of the proceeds will go towards Dayspring Home, a safe home for differently abled girls and women. Mm -hmm.